Samsung used to work on an official build of Linux for their high-end Galaxy phones and tablets called Linux on Dex. It was in beta, but it was still very capable. I did create a video on it, so check it out to see what I was able to accomplish with it. Unfortunately, Samsung discontinued Linux on Dex. To fill the void, I started using Andronix. Andronix is an Android app that allows you to install popular Linux distributions. These aren't only just command line base installs, you can also use a full blown desktop interface. So, is Andronix a good Linux on Dex replacement? Let's find out. To set up Andronix on your phone, you will need three apps installed. You need the Andronix app, Termux, and a VNC client either installed on your phone, desktop, or laptop. After installing those apps, open up Andronix and follow the directions for the Linux distribution you choose, and you will soon have a Linux distro installed on your phone. Run some commands to boot up Linux and a VNC server, and you can then connect to the Linux desktop on your phone through a VNC client. You can either use a VNC client on your PC to connect to your phone's IP address, or if your phone has the capability, you can connect your phone to an external display directly. My phone, a Galaxy S20 Ultra, has its own desktop mode built in, which makes this process very easy. You can use the phone itself to control the desktop, but everything will be really tiny and difficult to navigate, even if you have a mouse and keyboard attached to the phone. But if you have a big enough tablet, you should have a comfortable experience. Andronix offers different Linux installs you can try. Most are free, but they have some that they've modded themselves to work as best as possible on Android. They made modifications that improve performance and include essential software. The modded OSs are $1.99 a piece at the time of this video. Worth it if you like the modifications they have made. But if you don't mind doing some extra work, just install the free OSs. There are still limitations, even with the modded OSs, so don't expect a Linux install that's equivalent to one that you can install on a desktop or laptop. Therefore, it's best to use the tools and software installed by default on the modded Andronix distros. In the unmodded distros, you have to manually configure your distro to work as well as the modded ones. You can attempt to install other software, but be prepared for things not working. The Linux install I'm going to be testing is the modded version of Ubuntu 20.04. To find out the usefulness of Andronix, I'm going to try to replicate my desktop workflow. My desktop workflow involves coding in C-sharp and Python, video editing, audio editing, and image editing. I'm going to ignore document editing because Samsung Dex does a great job with that. But if you really want to do document editing in Linux, you can use LibreOffice, Google Docs, or Office Online. For coding, an ARM64 port of Visual Studio Code was already installed. I was able to get Python working on it, but not C Sharp. The C Sharp extension said that ARM64 processors are not compatible. Now, time to test out the media editing capabilities. Image editing with GIMP works great, much better than on my Intel Celeron Chromebook. It was fast and responsive, and I was able to easily edit the thumbnail to one of my videos. But be prepared to install fonts to it because it's very likely that fonts you use on your desktop won't be available on Linux. But overall, the image editing experience was excellent. To accomplish the rest of my workflow, I had to install software that was not included in the Ubuntu distribution. I needed an audio editor and a video editor that can export to Final Cut Pro XML. My audio editor of choice is the Reaper Digital Audio Workstation. It's what I use on my desktop to edit all the audio for my videos. It's low cost and powerful, so it will be interesting to see how it performs on a phone. Audio is only enabled by default on the modded distributions. To enable audio on unmodded distributions, you have to run a command in Termux that will enable audio for those distributions. You only have to do this once though. I tested out audio by going to YouTube and playing a video and it worked great. Now back to audio editing. I'm going to use Reaper and luckily they have an ARM64 version of it on their website to download. I'm going to use it to edit the audio for one of my videos. I don't use Reaper to record audio. Instead, I use a separate recorder for that. I would then transfer my recording to cloud storage and download it through a browser in Ubuntu. 
I was able to perform my full audio editing workflow. To the recording, I added noise reduction, a noise gate, use my preferred EQ preset, and adjusted the volume of the audio. The only thing I missed was the Ulean loudness meter plugin I used to help me set volume levels. The plugin is only available for Windows and Mac, but Reaper does have the same function by using another plugin, but it's more cumbersome to use. For video editing, I was hoping I could get the latest version of OpenShot or Kden Live running, but unfortunately I couldn't. I could only use the default packages available. Any later versions I tried to download separately or install through PPAs would not work. The reason I wanted the later versions was because of their Final Cut Pro export, which allows me to export video projects to DaVinci Resolve. The Mare Ubuntu OS does not have up-to-date versions of the video editors I need, and attempting to install newer versions just gave errors. I even tried the unmodded Arch distribution, which does have up-to-date versions of the editors. But I got audio errors when trying to run OpenShot and Caden Life wouldn't open at all, so I had to abandon editing videos with Andronix altogether. Installing video editors was also where I was running into the limitations of Andronix. I wanted to try snap packages and flat packs, but they are not possible to install. They require more permissions than Andronix can get from Android itself. Hopefully, there are updates that will fix these issues. If there are, I will retest video editing in a future video. So I have to say that I'm really impressed with what I can do with Andronix. It's unfortunate that I couldn't get video editing working, but I was able to fully edit my audio and images for my YouTube videos. This can come really useful if I don't have my computer or laptop available. I can just use someone else's computer or display either by using Samsung DeX or a VNC client. Linux on DeX was better in that you did not have to rely on a VNC client, but at this point, considering the permissions required to do this, to me, this method right now is the best way to install Linux on your Android phone. Keep in mind that as updates are made to Termux and the Linux distributions provided by Andronix, things will improve. So what I experienced now can be very different in the future. Also, Andronix isn't the only way to install Linux on your phone. I'm using Andronix because having their pre-configured modded OSs makes things easier and saves you time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and I'll speak to you next time.